Namaskar and welcome. I'd like to begin with a story this week. There was a professor at a university who was writing a book about spirituality and he decided to go and see one famous master. He arrived at the master's house and was shown in and he said, Master, I have a question. Can you tell me the essence of spirituality in one sentence? And the master said, that's easy. No self, no problem. This is uh, a famous Zen story. Uh, many of you have probably heard it before and those of you who have been here at the ashram have probably heard me say this because it's one of my favorite sayings that I think is just so simple and so accurate um, that it's just a gem. And if you remember it, no self, no problem, it will immediately kind of simplify your problems and uh, put a smile on your face and it's extremely helpful. So everybody in life has problems and that's the nature of, of life. Um, <clears throat> and we can go about solving these problems uh, in different ways. We can take each problem one by one and find a solution for it, which um, we'll have to do to uh, some extent. Uh, it's unavoidable. But what this little saying, no self, no problem, points out is another way, a rather more complete, quick, and permanent solution to all problems. So who suffers? Who is suffering these problems? Who is experiencing the problems? Um, it is the ego, the self, in, in the sense of the small self, not the atma or the great self. Um, so all these problems fundamentally uh, boil down to one simple problem, and that is uh, the existence of the ego. So if that sense of separate ego can be let go of, if we can let go of this feeling of self, um, then the one who suffers all these problems is gone and all the problems are solved in one go. So this is the ultimate spiritual solution and the goal of uh, spiritual practice. Um, our goal is freedom and, and the final bondage is the bondage of, of the ego. So, you know, when I've said this at times here at the ashram, uh, some people have objected that, you know, you're making the ego the bad guy. And it, it doesn't necessarily do that. Um, it doesn't say the ego is bad. It just says when the ego is ultimately gone, then all your problems are gone. And, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, have a negative attitude towards the ego. We, we can't operate in the world without an ego. Nevertheless, we have to acknowledge that as long as we are engaged with the ego, with identifying with with our uh, body, with our personality. There may be nothing wrong with those, but as long as we identify them, we identify with something limited and we keep ourselves limited. And so we should have a positive attitude towards ourselves. We should use our egos to make good decisions and so forth. But ultimately, the journey is taking us beyond the ego. It is transcendental. And ultimately, we have to let go of this ego. And as long as we are in the process of 
life you know we are using in the ego but at the same time we are letting go of it and how do we do that well there are different approaches to this the simplest one is to replace this word i with the word you or god or the divine so instead of i think i do um we train ourselves to replace that idea of I think I do with God thinks, God does, God is doing everything, God is thinking everything, God is imagining everything, um, God is the subject, uh, the ultimate subject. And this expands our consciousness um, it puts the ego, the small ego, in its correct position. It is one of many objects. It's not the ultimate subject. It is the object of the divine. The divine is imagining everything, including your body, your personality. Everything is the internal, according to yoga philosophy. Whatever exists, including you and me, are the internal creations of the divine. So if I really have a, a spiritual perspective, I see that the entire universe, including me, is God's imagination. So the ultimate doer, imaginer, thinker, and so forth is the divine. Um, it's when we forget this that we get caught up in I think, I do, and which is necessary to some degree um, just to operate in this world. Um, but when we get caught up in it, our, you know, we become, we get this false sense of me being the subject. Uh, I'm a subject in relation to, you know, something that I'm doing or something that I'm seeing, but behind that is the witness, the divine imaginer, and I forget that, and then I get caught in my ego and my suffering is tied up with that. So as I do, as I think, if I can keep in the back of my head the idea God does, God thinks, and I am an object, an instrument, a, a tool in the hands, a machine in the hands of the mechanic, um, <clears throat> then I have this, I, it's a means, it's a way of developing this, you know, reducing the ego, surrendering the ego, which can only be surrendered if there is something greater behind it to surrender to, right? If you, um, you know, you feel safe if you sense the presence of some strong personality behind you. If you feel yourself completely alone, then you have to take full responsibility. So, cultivating that sense of the presence of the divine, thinking, doing, imagining everything, um, <clears throat> you think, you do. Uh, is is this way to practically achieve the advice given by the master? No self, no problem. How to let go of the self? Um, as uh, our own master advised us, that the greatest secret in the universe is to always remember that the divine is witnessing you. Right? You are the object. The divine is the subject. By constantly remembering that, uh, the feeling the presence of a greater subject imagining and doing everything, constantly remembering that automatically reduces the ego, slowly but surely, um, until one can let go completely because has, one has this sense of confidence in that divine presence doing it, which it is doing and creating everything, but we just have to let go and trust that. Right? So surrender basically is another word for trust. Trusting that presence. Um, trusting um, and letting it, you know, not taking away, not stealing the subjecthood into your own ego. And, you know, another way of, uh, of looking at this, maybe to give some peace to those people who think we are the enemies of the ego, um, is to remember that the little ego is just that. It's not your only ego. 
your your atma yourself is the great ego is the divine right so when you let go of the little ego you come into your true being which is the divine self which is so in a sense when you can let go of your small self you come into your divine self which is the imaginer and the creator of everything so a very tiny short simple funny a phrase but it just hits the nail on the head it captures the essence of spirituality in one small sentence and the essence of the work we have to do which is surrender and letting go no self no problem so that's it um, a beautiful little phrase it it never fails to make me smile and to um, bring me to what life is really about and uh, stay focused and, and centered and remembering what I'm really uh, doing. So thank you for listening this week and um, I'm sure you will enjoy that. And even if you've heard it before, it's as I have hundreds of times, it's, it's a joy to remember. Have a great week.